this video is going to be looking at No Problem by Benjamin Zephaniah. Uh, so Zephaniah was born in Birmingham, so he was born British, but his parents had recently immigrated from the Caribbean. Uh, Zephaniah was born in 1958, and at the time, uh, even the centre of Birmingham where he lived was still quite monocultural, it was still largely white and um, really quite racist by modern thinking. Um, he experienced a lot of racism personally. Um, obviously, that was a more perhaps obvious racism, unpleasantness, violence, nasty words, but also, also quite a lot of what you might call unconscious bias, where people are kind of, they're well, they're well meaning, they want to say helpful things, say the right thing, but they're guilty of stereotyping. Uh, people like teachers, those sorts of people, some of them were overtly racist and honest about it, but many of them were trying to be kind and nice, but still failing to see the real person. And Zeph and I dropped out of school, age 14, um, and he gets in a real mess. Um, he gets involved in, drank, in gangs, in drugs. He ends up going to prison for quite some time. Um, but once he's while, while in prison, he starts going back to education. So obviously he left school without any exams, but in prison he goes back to education. And eventually he achieves a PhD, so he actually becomes a doctor. Not a medical doctor, but a doctor of literature. So this is a person who's extremely bright, but because of the way he was treated as a young person and the opportunities that were denied to him, sometimes because of genuine a, a desire to be racist, sometimes just because people didn't really understand or didn't want to think properly. Um, he didn't have those opportunities, which made him not bother with school. And it wasn't until, until later in life that he came back and proved how very clever he was. So the story of the poem, we've got a first person narrator. It could be the poet, um, but it's also universal. So it could be reflecting any black person's experience. Um, and the speaker talks about the stereotyping that he felt as a young person and how that limited and damaged him and how he feels about it now and what his hopes are now. In terms of form and structure, um, it's got this very regular rhyme and rhythm scheme. Um, Zeph and I is known for being a rap poet, so he's very influenced by the genre of rap and you can really hear that in the rhythms and the cadences of the poem um it's mostly it's written in two stanzas and that shows the change in time but within those stanzas it has quatrains four line chunks which rhyme regularly um so we the first stanza of the of the, the main stanzas rather than the quatrain the first stanza shows the, the past tense what it was what life was like when he was a teenager and the second shorter stanza shows the present time, his present experience. The narrow shape, it's a long skinny poem and obviously that's largely because of the, the rap rhythm but it also could perhaps reflect the narrow mindedness of the people that stereotype him that aren't willing to challenge their thinking. Like half cast, it uses the phonetic spelling to reflect his Caribbean heritage and his uh, his accent, which has some brummy um, cadences and sounds, but also definitely influenced by his Caribbean parents and heritage. So, the title, no problem, um, is an experience, uh, sorry, an expression, sorry, which sort of says, you know, don't worry about it. But clearly there's some irony there because he is worrying about it and so should she. And so, so, so should we, I beg your pardon. Right, so he says, I am not the problem. And you see the phonetic spelling there straight away. Um, and then you can see this plosive B here. But I bear de brunt of silly playground taunts and racist stunts. So the, the, the plosive B there creates aggression. It sounds like a sort of repeated punching or something similar. We've got this refrain, I am not the problem. Um, and here we've got the contrast between kind of kiddie 
minor racism, having names called, that's what taunting means, calling names, which is still very hurtful and damaging, but um, not as damaging perhaps as more serious racism here. Second quatrain, we have the re repeated refrain, I am not the problem. He says, I am born academic, but they got me on the run. Now I am branded athletic. So he says, I'm quite clever, actually. I'm a bright chap. But they just assumed they, presumably being white people, possibly teachers, um, assumed that I would be a sporty. Because this is a stereotype associated with young black men and women, but young black men in particular, um, more so perhaps in the 60s and 70s, but even even now it's still a, an, uh, a stereotype that might exist. Oh, not very bright, but he can run. He's really quick. So he says, now I'm branded athletic. And branded is an interesting word because it has suggestions and connections to slavery. Uh, when slaves were sold in the US and the Caribbean, when, sl when the slave trade was still a thing, they would be branded. They would have a hot iron stuck into their flesh with a... Um, a symbol on it which showed that they belonged to a particular slave owner. Um, so it has very significant meaning connected to his heritage. Another quatrain, I'm not the problem. If you give I a chance, you can see that um, patois there, I can teach you of Timbuktu. I can do more than dance. Another example of stereotyping here with the dancing um, there's a, suggest there's a, a stereotype that people of Afro-Caribbean heritage have got good rhythm, that they're good dancers. But he says, I'm so much more than that. I can tell you, I know stuff. I can tell you stuff. I've got the internal rhyme, building the rhythm there. Timbuktu is an ancient city at the centre of a civilization in Africa, in the uh, Sahara Desert, in a country called Mali. Um, so I can tell you all sorts of stuff about my heritage, about the world... I'm so much more than just a dancer or a runner or whatever. I know stuff, he says. And then we have the final quatrain in the first stanza. I am not the problem. I greet you with a smile. You put me in a pigeonhole, but I am versatile. Now, when you put something in a pigeonhole or put a person in a pigeonhole, you keep them restricted. You make assumptions about them, which... Uh, box them in, stop them from developing in the way they want to. So he says, that's what uh, you... It's got that first-person address, hasn't it, like half-cast and class game and some of the others. Where it's, it's, where, sorry, I beg your pardon, where it's a second-person address, a first-person speaker talking to someone, challenging their thinking about things. He says, so I greet you with a smile, but you put me in a perch pigeonhole. He says, but don't, I'm so much better than that. I'm so much more than what you assume about me. I'm versatile, he says. Notice there's no full stop at the end of the first stanza which indicates perhaps more racism to come. So this is his teenage life, and maybe even as an adult, he still suffers from racism. Or maybe it says, I've got so much more to offer, let me show you. And we go on to the second stanza. And the refrain has gone now, notice. So the refrain's repeated several times in the past tense. But as we go into now, he says, the refrain isn't used. These conditions may affect me as I get older. And by conditions, I think he means the assumptions that people have made about him, the stereotyping. And I am positively sure I have no chips on me shoulders. To have a chip on your shoulder means you're upset about unfair treatment. And often it's associated with being sulky. Um, we said, I'm not sulking about it. Black is not the problem. See how the refrain has changed? It's no longer I am not the problem. It's now black. So it becomes a more universal experience. And he hints perhaps that the problems don't come from within the black community, but actually from white racism. Black is not the problem. Mother country got it right. Now, your mother country is where you're born, where you grow up. And we wonder whether his is England, which is where he spent his time, or the Caribbean countries that his parents came from. It may, I, I imagine it's some of both. And then he finishes by subverting, turning upside down, taking the mick out of a typical excuse used by some by people who might just be about to say something that's uncomfortable as far as a racism, as far as racism is concerned. 
So they're right to say something racist. So I'm not racist. Some of my best friends are black, but... And he subverts that and says, just for the record, some of my best friends are white. So he's taking the mick out of it. He's parodying that phrase. So what does it go well with? Well, I think the most obvious one is, of course, half-cast. Um, it's got racism in it. It's got stereotyping. They both share the um, phonetic spelling, the lack of typical punctuation. They both have that first person address that might be the poet talking to a second person with a strong you this you that you the other so obviously that's the most of that's the clearest connection it also goes well with class game because class game like both of the race poems is about stereotyping and judgment and prejudice um, and they're both about restricting people on the basis of either race or class so that's class game